So while there are universal themes that you can see across all of the uh, things that are written and said and spoken and that we hear, I really want to say that we all have a very unique personal experience of cancer or of living with cancer. It's not one size fits all, nor a survivorship. For instance, there are age differences. The differences between those of you who are very young when you deal with this or those who are older in, in your life, the developmental places, it's just different. It's not making anyone more or less. It's just saying your, your themes or issues, you, they're different. And you struggle with different questions depending on where you are in your life. Your cultural background, ethnic background, race, this is, these are also factors that need to be taken into consideration. And I'm really glad that they finally are being considered and taken into, taken into some account that those, you know, you just don't have one aspect for everybody. And we need to pay attention to each unique individual and what they bring to it. I believe that there's a, an important factor of telling your story. That's one of the reasons that I wrote the book I wrote, Surviving the Storm, Telling Your, or your Own Cancer Story, because what I would notice in groups or in large gatherings, talks and so on, is that when it came time for questions or comments, people were bursting to talk about their own experience. They were bursting to talk about their story. I remember once I was doing a group with somebody and her experience was so palpable. She had been, she had not been able to talk to anybody. There was no one until this group that she was able to tell her story. And it turned out that her diagnosis had happened 19 years ago. So this woman had held all of this for all those years, suffering in silence. And I, I really want to say we don't have to suffer in silence. And to find ways to tell your story, to verbalize it, to write about it, to talk about it, to tell it until you feel it's time for another story. Very important to tell your story. It's essential to give yourself space and time and to not push and shove yourself or feel pushed and shoved. Dr. Jimmy Holland, MD, who was the fantastic, fantastic clinician who really, I think, first brought a lot of attention to the emotional needs in the cancer community, coins the phrase, the tyranny of positive thinking. And she talks about, now you see this phrase a lot, but she was the one who initially came up with this, saying that it's really cruel that we always have to be positive. And there's some fear that, oh my gosh, if you're not positive, uh, you're not going to heal. You won't get well. You're not doing it right, which is a terribly cruel thing to say to anybody. Like, you've got to think positive. You're not doing it right. So all this by way of saying that it's also okay to allow yourself a down day. And not to worry that, uh-oh, you know, this is, this is terrible, I, I can't have a down day, I can't have a, a darker feeling. Because you can, it's all part of the balancing of going through what you're going through. So really give space and time for yourself. Again, I'm going to be focusing more on the emotional and psychological aspects of survivorship. Looking at being mindful as opposed to managing. Managing symptoms, managing diet, managing things is very important. It's one layer of survivorship. I think that's pretty well covered in a lot of the groups and programs and classes that many of you, I hope, have access to. Being mindful can lead you into another level or another layer of life-changing experience because a life-threatening illness can be a life-changing experience. So that would be more moving into the mindful arena while also keeping that management is, is important too. You can have both and you can hold both at the same time. Transforming your experience is not something, in my opinion, that happens overnight. In fact, transformation takes time, it takes reflection, and it takes what I've already said, making sure that you're, you don't push and shove yourself into some kind of box that doesn't feel right to you. Richard Tedeschi 
and Lawrence Calhoun write about what they call post-traumatic growth. They define this as the experience of growth emerging from the struggle with major life difficulties. Emerging being the key word here. This is an emergence, and it comes from the discovery, the working with, the sitting with, the healing of a major life struggle to get to that place. They feel that there are five components to post-traumatic growth, new possibilities. What now is possible? Maybe there are things possible that I never thought were possible because now that I've faced this and feel like, hey, I've got it, I've really got to get on with it. Whatever time I've got, I want to make the most of it. So new possibilities. Changed relationships. Some relationships feel like they grew, others may not feel like they fit anymore, so relationships can change. I would also add work and priorities can change, and that can also be part of a post-traumatic growth. Holding both feeling stronger and feeling more vulnerable. Both and. You're more vulnerable, and in that, though, you have a newfound sense of strength. A greater appreciation for life, a gratitude for life, sometimes just for the small things that you, you realize, these little things are so beautiful, important to me, I'm not going to take them or others for granted anymore. There can also be a change in spiritual and existential experiences. In spiritual, that can, that can run the gamut all the way from those of you who have a religious structure, those of you who feel like your spiritual experience may be walking in the forest, some of you may do a meditation practice, whatever spiritual means to you, it's, it's that place though that has, it's, it's more than, it's more than our, our, our smaller minds, it goes into our bigger minds, it goes into the bigger picture. So more about the bigger picture. And the existential experiences, the existential experiences are like the real experiences of life, of existence. There's life, there's death, there's anxiety, there's fears. All of those things are part of our existence. And so how we can learn to be with them in a way that feels open, engaged, and growing is really important. <laughs> 